Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. Consider joining the new Cheap Controls group on Facebook so you can stay in better contact with us. This is the fourth video where I've talked about um, changing the pages on the Nexion display. In this one we're going to use feedback to register if there's a button change on the Nexion display and feed it back to the Arduino. We're going to pick up from where we left off. You notice if I flip the switch, it takes a second, but it switches. If you make a change on the display and you flip the switch, it stays on zero, page zero, but you saw that it flashed. I found a new software called Fritzig, or Fritzing, and I'm going to use that to show the schematics from now on, and I'll have this image uploaded at CheapControls.com if you want to download it for yourself. But I have my switch running between 3.3 volts and ground to determine my logical 1 and logical 0. And then the next in display, in the past I've just had to switch the yellow wire because all I've been doing is transmitting out of the UNO into the display. In this example, we're going to be reading from the Nexion display back into the Arduino using the receive pin, so I'll have to convert both of them over. I'm going to leave the power on the USB. We're going to start in the Arduino code. I'm going to start this code from scratch, and I'm going to be doing some cutting and pasting just to speed it along. What we've got up here is we've got the pin on pin 3, and we're using a variable to point it out. I'm also going to use the onboard LED, which is on pin 13 for the UNO. We're just going to call it light. That will give us a visual representation as to what the Arduino thinks the page is that we're on. And then we also have to have our current page um, variable, just like we've had in the past. In our um, setup, we're going to run it at 9600 baud, just like we always have. But we have to set up that light as an output pin. And in this one, we're going to go back to the interrupt. So we're going to add the interrupt back in. So we have the attach interrupt, and remember it's camel case where the I here has to be capital, and then the digital pin to interrupt has to be uppercase pin, uppercase two, and uppercase interrupt. And then the pin that we're going to be using as the interrupt, which is pin three, and then the change page is going to be the subroutine or function that we're going to run. But this last variable is different from the last time. We're going to run one function whether it goes from low to high or high to low. So whenever it changes we're going to run change page. Now we don't need anything in this loop. If you remember the last time we did the interrupts, um, this loop just will do nothing over and over and over again. But whenever it changes it's going to run a function down here called change page. So I've just pasted it down here. The interrupt is going to fire every time that we flip the switch. The current page will either be a 1 or a 0. It's going to start at 0 because that's what we have it assigned to. And then when we flip the switch, if that pin is a 1, it'll execute this code. If it's the same, it won't. If it's different, we want the page to change. We send page, a space, and then the number of the page we want it to go to. So since we only have two pages and it's 0 and 1, we will just send whatever the pin is. So if we're currently on page 0, and, it, and we flip the switch and it goes to page 1, we want it to go to page 1. And then it has to be followed by these FFs. And we're also going to set the light, or turn the light on, set it equal to whatever the pin is. Remember, if we've gone to 1, it'll turn it on. If we go to 0, it'll turn it off. And then we're going to define the current page equal to the pin. So that way, when we run it, back through again, current page will be 1. When we flip the switch to 0, it will send page 0. It will turn the light off, and it will set the current page to 0. So we're ready to go back to page 1 again. I'm going to upload this and test again. We also will get rid of that um, delay, so it should be a lot faster response. So now I've brought up the camera on the UNO and the display, and we can see if it worked. And you can see it flips very fast now. And right now I'm on zero, but when I go to one, you can see that the light comes on. 
and when I go to zero, the light goes off. So it works just as we expect, but we still have the problem that when I touch that and I flip it to go to page one now, it's already on page one, and we get that flash. We want to get rid of that. So it's going to be a two-step process to get rid of that. We need to send some feedback from the Nexion display. So I'm going to go to that editor now. So now what we have is we have our two pages, page one and page zero, and we've worked with these buttons before and the text boxes. And you can do a, a press event and a release event from both the box and the button. You look over here in the attributes, you see the ID of the button and the ID of the text box. But if you click out here in the space, you can also have attributes assigned to the page itself. And this is page zero. You can see how it's changed here. It's the page. But you have more things that you can uh, have events on. You can have it on the pre-initialize, the post-initialize. You can have it when you touch the page, when you release the page, or when you exit the page. So the pre-initialize is when it first comes on before it executes anything. But then you have to remember loading these buttons on here takes a little time. So you can also have an event on after the buttons are all loaded. But also if I were to click button one now, right before the page exits, it can run an event there. We're gonna go ahead and execute something right when the page comes on. We're gonna use the print function. When the page initially comes on, we want it to send the value of that page. So we've just gone to zero, zero comes up, we want to send a zero. And when we're on one, the second one comes up, we want to print a one. Now I'm going to upload this file to the Nexion display. Now I had a previous video where I described how to collect the data from the display without using the Nexion library. You can go back and review that if you want. It should be pretty easy to find on my YouTube channel. If there's data available, then we're going to execute this code. In other words, if, it, if the Nexion has sent the 1 or the 0, it will trigger this. Otherwise, it'll just ignore it. And then we're going to have a variable called data from display. I don't really need this in this case, but I want to stay consistent if you watch the other videos. If we weren't just sending a 0 or 1, if we were sending a word or just uh, something different, you may have more than one character. I put this little delay in there so that way the serial port has time to capture all the data. I worry that the Arduino can function faster than the Nexion can send the data. So I just want to pause a second and make sure everything is collected. And then while there are characters in the serial buffer, we want to add them to this variable, this data from display. Now in this case, it is only one, so we really don't need to worry about that. But if there were more characters, we'd want to loop through all the characters. And then we're going to take whatever we've collected, and we're going to send it to check page, another subroutine we'll add down below here. Okay, down here, we're going to bring the data in, and if it's a zero, which means that we've hit the button and changed the page to zero, we want to change the light on the Arduino to turn it off. And we want to set the current page equal to zero. Just like we set the current page equal to what the pin was when we flipped the switch, now we're going to set the current page to what we pushed on the display. Now if the display is a one, then that means that we've gone to page one we want the light to be on or high and we're going to set the current page to one. So if we've changed this page, let's say down here to a one, it was on a zero and a one, this will be one. So let's say we flip the switch and it goes to a one. We want to go to page one, but it's already on page one. It will ignore all of this and it, the flash shouldn't occur. So now we're going to upload this and see if it works. I mean, you can see that I have an error here, change page was not declared, but we know that it worked before, so I have an error somewhere else. And it's probably a curly brace error. The nice part about this um, IDE for Arduino is if you click on the lower brace, it highlights what it thinks the upper brace is. So if I click here, 
it's not catching the lower brace. So I know I've got something wrong, but if I go on the lower brace, it's here. So I'm missing a curly brace. So we'll try again. This time I'm just going to compile it. There we go. That time it worked. Let's go ahead and upload it. Okay, now they're both on zero. So now if I flip the switch, it should change the display. And you can see that the light comes on. But now that it's on zero, if I tap the button, we hope that the light comes on on the Arduino. And it does. And I turn it off and I turn it on. Now the switch is currently on zero, so if I flip the switch, we shouldn't get the flicker on the screen. And you can see that we didn't get the flicker. So in this example, I combined using this collection from the nection. Now that rhymes, haha. I also have the interrupt from the Arduino itself. So in this way, no matter what page I'm on or what I flip, I shouldn't get the flicker. I get nice feedback from the Nexion display and everything works, works very well. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.